What a way to start the service. Hey, good morning, folks. Welcome to Unity Church in Winston-Salem. So glad you guys are here today. I hope you've had a fantastic weekend. I was just so blessed by the beauty that God has blessed us with driving in today to see all the azaleas blooming, all the dogwoods blooming, and just grateful for a beautiful spring season that we've had here. And just so thankful um, for the creator. Thank you, Gaia. Thank you, God, for that. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. So looking forward to hearing an incredible message from Pastor Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Thank you for those of you who are joining us today, both in present and in Zoom and on Facebook and on Google and YouTube and all the things. So thank you for tuning in today. Um, so you know that Unity Church is a church of prayer. And we are so grateful um, for prayer because we know that prayer works. We continue to pray for um, Pastor Elizabeth's son. Hopefully he's doing well and that he's on his journey and God is just taking care of all of those things. So that's good. But if you've got an immediate prayer need, you can do one of two things. One, you can fill out a prayer request card that we'll actually put in the lobby there that Pastor Elizabeth will pray over for seven days. We'll send that on to Missouri for have unity pray over that for 30 days. So you'll be covered in prayer, which is a good thing. But if you also need prayer, please feel free. You know, after the service, you can come down and see myself, Pastor Elizabeth, anybody, we'd be happy to pray for you um, and just really connect in with what you need to make that happen. Um, we had just talked about how beautiful everything is outside. Thank you so much for our volunteers who have helped us with our um, community cleanup day here at the church. We've got one that's scheduled for next Saturday, the 22nd, from 8... Thank you. 8.30 to noon, we're going to be working in the back of our property with the Little Church, the Labyrinth, the Memorial Garden. If you could be there, um, we would really appreciate it. 8.30 here on Saturday. Um, if you would like to connect with that, please see Brother Tony, and uh, we'll get everything connected together in that way. Of course, Wednesday night, we have a wonderful service at 5.30 with Linda to do um, a light yoga and then a Diksha Blessing at 7 o'clock. So, and we've also got Clemens Community Day coming up on the end of the last Saturday of the month on the 29th. Um, we've got a sign-up sheet in the back in the lobby. We would love for you to join us. It's from 10 to 2, and we've got different opportunities for you to join us either for just an hour, 30 minutes if you need to, or you can do the whole time. That, that'd be great as well. So thank you to those who have signed up to be able to help us already. We are grateful for your help and your support. But if you're interested in that, please sign up. Um, we're also thinking about doing a dash game middle May. Um, I think it's around the 17th. And if you're interested in that as well, we'll have a sign up sheet. Just let me know your name, uh, your phone number, email address, and how many tickets you think you'd like. And if there's enough support for that, we'll definitely move forward and make that happen. So today I'm very excited to, if you're interested in sticking around after the service today, we're going to have our annual financial update just to let you guys know where we are in the church with how everything has has been going so that'll be immediately after the service today we encourage you to stick around of course if you need to head out please feel free to leave and go on we bless you for a good afternoon um, but I think it'll be a good meeting Miss Linda is going to take care of that so thank you Linda in advance God bless you all are there any other announcements we need to be aware of yes ma'am Deb Yes, for the dash game. Yeah, sorry, that's the dash game. And we'll have that. If you're interested in going to the baseball game, it's it's faith, community faith day. It's on a Wednesday night. So we're just trying to see if there's interest in that. So if there's no other questions or anybody is all good, let's all stand to our feet and let's greet each other the unity way. The Christ in me greets the Christ in you, and we work together. For the glory of God. And God, truly, we rejoice today that we could be together as a beautiful community and a fellowship today, God. Lord, I pray now that you would open our minds and our hearts, God, for the words that you have for us today to help us to remember all that we are through you, God. And we rejoice indeed. And we are grateful for this day. And all God's children said, Amen. You may be seated. Pastor Elizabeth. Good morning. Hey, Deb, will you do me a favor? Put back up there what you had this morning. Are you all at peace today? 
You want a reminder of how to stay in peace all the time. I walked in here and Deb had something up there and it just touched my heart. And I thought, yeah, I need to put that on my refrigerator. <laughs> and now Deb says she can get it up there. And I thought there was the magic. <laughs> Read it with me. At peace, from this moment on, I choose peace. Whatever I do and wherever I go, I will not let the negative energy get me my heart and my mind i let go of all the frustra frustrations and stresses that have accumulated so far i don't have the space for bitterness and doubt i am happy and at peace with my inner self are you happy and at peace with your inner self are you can you say it? I am happy and at peace with my inner self. One more time. I am happy and at peace with my inner self. Just breathe that in. Let it out. Mm. Can't you feel a difference? And coming in and hustling and bustling to get here. And then when you remind yourself that what happened there, you took authority over your thoughts and you affirm your inner peace. And that's where peace comes from. That's where everything comes from. That's in your life. That's a big thought. And it's the hard, hard, hard saying to really get. But I'm seeing more and more, especially in just the past few days, that I've always, always known we're human and divine. But when it comes to being out in this world, we forget the divinity that's within us. So often we forget. And we think we find that peace when we have things that we want, material things. But Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things are added to you. All things. When we pray, what do we ask for? We're usually asking the divine for things of the world, for our car payment, house payment, for that new whatever, for somebody else to change their life. I don't want to say this, for somebody else to get well. We want the outside circumstances to change. But when we begin to live in that place of coming from spirit, the old begins to pass away and we begin to find that there's a newness awakening within us. And we began to see in a different way and hear in a different way in life. Things we've heard, things we see, we saw them in that outer world. We've been looking at things on an earthly level. But have we really seen the spiritual with spiritual eyes? Have we been hearing with spiritual ears? This week, what came up for me is on the road to Emmaus. And I thought, what is that road really about? It's that same road we're walking right now. Everyone's walking it. It's the path to enlightenment. It's the path to illumination. It's a path to peace and understanding. We're being called back 
to where we were in the beginning in consciousness. Because we are consciousness. And we forget who we are because we're not seeing it. We're not seeing it in each other. We're not hearing the truth that Jesus came and said, I set you free. The truth will set you free. Don't kid yourself. You've already heard the truth. Every single one of us have. But we've gotten it. And most of us sitting here or those watching and listening, you've heard it before too. Because the majority of us has walked some spiritual path and we've heard the teachings of the masters without our ears and with physical eyes. Last week was resurrection. That symbology and that story and that, that truth that can set us free when we understand it. About that resurrection from the dead. Who are the dead? Those laying in the grave? We are the living dead, the majority of all of us. What are, am I talking about? We're dead to the spiritual aspect of ourself. We're dead to the wisdom and knowledge that has been with us since the beginning of time. It was placed within us. And so Jesus and other masters have come to this earth to tell us about who we are, about the power that resides within us, about all that they are, we are too. And most of us here are familiar with Buddha and Krishna and Jesus and others. Especially the majority of us have walked that path and listened to the teachings of Jesus with a natural ear, with natural eyes. Over 2,000 years ago, when he was walking on the shores of Galilee, he had 12 very, very close friends. They ate together. They sang together. I'm seeing them dance together. They played together. They talked together and they meditated and they prayed. They listened to him. They watched him. And he told them of things to come. And he was that example of that perfect manifestation of the image of divinity itself. He told them that he would, when the body temple was destroyed, because he spoke of the body as being the temple of God, that you tear this down in three days, I'm going to rise. It will rise again. And they laughed at him. They couldn't hear what he was saying. They thought that he was talking about the temple that took so long to build the earthly temple. How many times did he say, my kingdom is not of this earth? It's not of this earth. Yet they slaughtered him for it. It's not of this earth. There's to be a new heaven and a new earth. And it's right here and right now in us. And he said, come and I'll show you the way. Come, I'll show you the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. Not me, Jesus. But the Christ in me. You know, when Christ, that word came up, Christian came up. Humanity has known there was a Christo, a Christ seed that resolves in humanity. 
that lives and breathes and has its being. That's been known. And so when Jesus was hanging on the cross, they started making fun of those that had followed him. Oh, so you're a Christo. Is that who you are? Do you follow the Christo? Do you follow that one that says he has the Christ in him, the God in him, the God seed that's being manifested? Look, <laughs> you Christos, you Christians, followers of divine consciousness in someone. They were mocking him. And those around feared that if they said they were his follower, they too would be hanging on that cross. They let the hierarchy rule them and reign over them. They'd been in bondage for so, so long, even before that in other times as slaves under Pharaoh. Pharaoh represents our ego self is still ruling and the hearts and minds of humanity dictating to us, telling us what we can and can't do. But usually the first thoughts that come up when something happens, most of them are negative. Most of them are fearful. But that's what the divine in us is here for to show us a different way. And so after so many people had followed Jesus and his teachings for three and a half years or so, when they saw him on the cross, they couldn't believe anything except he was a man and he was dead. Life is eternal. My head's saying I can't go there. What's coming in? But every time I think something like that, I usually say it anyway. So, as I'm saying, life is eternal. We have just forgotten that. And the life of who we are, for me, I believe in reincarnation. I was not raised that way. And actually, nobody taught me that. Things just started showing up. I was intuitive, and people would come to me, and I would tell them things that would come up when they'd be in, um, in circumstances they couldn't understand. It was almost like spirit would let me close my eyes and rise up a bit above something, and I could see their path and things that were in obstacles in their way and understand the dynamics of people that were in their life because those people were in their life in some other past lifetime. So often I'd walk away from that and say, God, I don't want to do this anymore. How do I find myself in that position? Because I'm making these things up, it seems like. But yet these people understood everything I was saying. It was like, yeah, that, yeah, 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 that's right. That, that's right. That, 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 that. But I didn't feel comfortable in that. But what I'm feeling right now is that was a part of me discovering that life is eternal and we reincarnate and reincarnate and reincarnate. And what we're doing is having a chance to take those what we call mistakes or those uh, pains and sufferings that we've caused on someone else and come back and make amends in a way that we can take that when it, we face it again, that same obstacles, because we repeat, and repeat, repeat. How many of you have gotten out of a relationship only to turn around and get in the same relationship, just like that relationship. You're in an abusive relationship. I walk away. I'll never do that again. Never do that again. Never do that again. Never get married again. And voila, there it is again. Then there it is again. Maybe four or five times. We repeat it until one day it's like no more. No more. I'm going to handle it in a way that this friction, this anger, this resentment that I've built up over all these times will be dissolved and turned back in. It's transmuted. When it starts coming up, it's asking for you to look at it. Why are we feeling this anger? 
Why are we feeling this bitterness? Why are we feeling this hatred a wanting revenge? It's saying, here I am again. What you gonna do with me? Let me expand and stuff me back down? Or you're gonna begin to forgive and love and understand and see it through the eyes of love. When you come to that place, that energy dissolves, that energy transmutes. I was telling Tony this week, I said, I recognize for me, I'll tell my same stories that have bugged me over and over to him. And he'll do the same thing, but he's not one that does that so often. He kind of lets things go, I recognize this week. And I thought, why this thing that bothered me 20 years ago, why does it bother me again now? Something that bothered me, that seems like it, that happened yesterday, it's popped up, but it's just like all these other things. Why? It's because it's asking, the answer came back, it's asking to be transmuted. So if you stop and think of the stories that you're repeating over and over and over again, especially like, when my son died, my mother died, different people die. We tell the story over and over, have it happened, don't we? It hurts and somebody doesn't know about it, so we share it with him. Does somebody think it's gonna make it a little better, bit better? And we repeat the same scenario over and over and over again. Why? So everybody will know it? It's not, it's because it's so heavy, you want somebody else to help you carry it but yet you pull it back in that it shouldn't have been this way. It shouldn't have happened that way. It didn't, it wasn't my way. It wasn't what I wanted. And that's everything that bothers us in life. It's not the way I want it. But I'm asking now, where are you taking me to Lord? We're going to a place of opening our eyes and seeing that right where I am, right where you are, it's right where you need to be. It's right where you need to be. And in being where you need to be, you're having an opportunity to be in that pain. And pain is usually what triggers transformation. Is what I'm hearing. It triggers transformation because it gets so heavy, you can't do it on your own. And when you can't do it on your own, yes, now I understand we run to other people outside. Please help me. Please help me. I can't hold this anymore. I can't stand the pain. I can't this. I can't. Please help me. I'm telling you my story so I'll be healed. We're looking out there. But when we finally come to that place where our heart opens enough to give us a little light and our eyes and ears enough to know there is a power greater than myself. There is a power greater than myself. Do you hear it? There is a power greater than myself. Is there a power greater than you? Is there a power greater than you? When we recognize there's a power greater than us, then we say, help me, help me. I need the power from that source that's greater than me. Call it God. Call it universal consciousness. Call it Buddha, Jesus, Krishna. There's something greater that you know can help you lift you out of that low, low, low vibration of pain, of bitterness, of hate, of confusion, and doubt, and put you into that place of peace, peace, peace. All that stuff begins to come up and spill out. And that power that you recognize, you have to recognize it. That's it. You have to recognize it. And when you recognize it, there that love is. That love that forgives everything, everything that's ever happened through you, it forgives 
It forgives and it loves. And when that love and forgiveness comes forth from the bottom and the inside and the outside and everywhere around you and wraps you and begins to come from that heart space, it lifts you up. It lifts you up. That's the resurrection. That's the resurrection I'm hearing. Because Jesus took all the stuff that everybody ever held that he had ever met around him and he saw humanity and he forgave every single one of us because he's known us from the beginning and will continue to know all who ever incarnate in all souls. And he forgave it all. And he loved all. He loves every single one as God loves. His love is that same love as God. He came to that place, and when he did, all was transmuted in him. And he was lifted up above this world. I have overcome the world. I have overcome all the bitterness, the hate, the frustration, the chaos that this world has to offer. I have taken it on me, and I've overcome it. But he did say, now you come and follow me. Now you do the same. You bear your own cross. Pick up your cross. Pick up what you've been nailed to for so long. Pick up those things that happened to you lifetime after lifetime or even today that you got so upset about you could hardly stand it. That you couldn't stand to see a certain person because they nailed you to that cross. They never nailed you to cross. We nailed our own self to that cross. And we are still carrying it. It's only when we can acknowledge there's a power in us greater than our own self that is merging with us, that spirit, that is what happened in that grave was a spiritualization of matter took place. The light went and purified every cell, every fiber, every essence, every past, everything that was in the man Jesus, and the Christ was then seen. But the Christ was already being seen in him before this took place. It was merging out. Have you ever been around somebody and you could just feel love? You could just feel peace? Hope we all have met somewhere along the line. They could just walk in a room and the room just kind of Mm. that's the light coming from within them. That light that Jesus said, we are the lights of the world. Let your light shine. That's what can happen and is happening to humanity. But all the goop and all the stuff is coming up. I'm seeing old some old writings it's called the apocalypse the gospels of the apocalypse the gospels of the, the destruction of something the 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 gospels of things falling apart and i heard ministers saying we're living in the apocalyptic age the time when everything is falling apart everything is divided you know the christ is coming back the Messiah is coming back. The Buddha is coming back. Krishna is coming back in a certain age. But it's coming back through us. And when it does, it begins to dissolve and tear down the old in us. This age where you came in, you incarnated for this time. Every single one of us did this. Because we are here to bring in a new heaven and a new earth. This dimension is a heaven. And then there's more heavens. There's higher frequencies that we can go to. But right now, this is being purged. So don't be afraid when you hear, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. And I think I've spoken that for. 10, 20 years, and I didn't know why I'd say those things. But now, this past couple of years, we've been walking in fear, people have. Fear of everything, fear to breathe, 
you know, fear to touch, fear to say anything. And my heart says, don't be afraid. I don't have to get out here and get in your face about something because my way is not your way and your way is not my way. Every single one of us has an idea of what's right for us. And I don't have a right to tell you what's right for you. And no one has the right to tell me what's right for me, except that Holy Spirit, a spirit within each and every one of us. If we have ears to hear and eyes to see, it begins to transform everything. And then we do not have to fear. Before that God, that divine is with us. I'm getting a flashback and going back to Russia. I was in Russia. And it was, well, anyway, I was in Russia. We were in this little rundown hotel that had, has been standing like there for ages. And the, the doors were only uh, plywood with a little hook on it. And I heard these big boots coming down to the hall. I was hearing the words, Americans, Americans. And they were the soldiers and stuff that had entered in. I knew at any time they could, then they were shooting. I was on the second floor. They were shooting right outside, things happening out there. And all of a sudden, I just kind of was getting relaxed in the thought, Lord, I didn't come here to die. And I fell asleep. Next morning, they were talking about, they were clearing up, you know, they've been murders out there on the street and then even on the plane it was like that everything was you tie a seat belt and if you had a seat belt you know the place was totally dilapidated you know these things <laughs> and there were chickens on the plane there were guns on the planes all these kind of things and the smell was horrendous but anyway but I learned that there was a presence you could feel it around you and at any moment, if I'd let myself get in fear, something could have happened. I mean, it could have happened anyway, but in that peace, I knew all was well. And I had a few people around me, each one of us did. And I asked somebody, I said, this is the, said this, I said, this is the mafia that's with us, isn't it? And I was with some ministers. I said, shh, shh, shh. of course it is, but we can't say anything, be quiet. <laughs> but they were the power, they're the power there. But we have a power and presence with us and around us. It's divine beings, it's divine energy, it's divine presence that's here with us. And if you came in, thinking about you this week and this morning even, uh, if you came in for this time and this place to do a work that is yours only you can do, you, will, you have the opportunity to feel, fulfill it in this lifetime. You really can do it. Because change is coming. You'll see it really clearly. I hate to say this. I'm feeling in the next 30 years. <laughs> You'll see a big, big difference. But we're on the beginning lines of doing this. And it's not, it's just going to happen. Government will change but not the way we fear it's going to and not the way they fear it's going to when there's two sides. I'm seeing there's a light in the middle of all of it. And it's taking us in a direction none of us know about hardly, unless you are on that higher plane and you can look and see. When you begin to see with spiritual eyes and hear with spiritual ears, you'll know where you're going. You know you can't be stopped. You know you're here just to shine the light of love and peace. You know you're here to just stand for the truth that will set people free, but you don't have to get them into a box and tell them what to do. Because when you speak truth, truth will resonate to the heart when it's coming from the heart. And that's what happened to the, uh, the men that were on the road to Damascus. Two of them, no, the road of, was it, where were they on the road to? Emmaus, 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 I'm seeing it up there now. Okay, they were going and they were talking. And here comes Jesus up behind them. He walks up with them. He said, what are y'all talking about? He said, well, are you a stranger? These two guys did. Are you a stranger in town? Hadn't you heard about Jesus? 
He said, well, what are you, what are, what are you saying? What are you talking about? They said, they, he was crucified. You've heard that, haven't you? And they went on to tell him what had happened in the past week and everything that had gone on. And they said, this morning, we got this information. These women came running back to the disciples and told them and told us they were in that middle of that group too, and told us that Jesus who had been crucified and we saw him, we saw him on the cross. We saw him dead. We saw him. We saw a spear being rammed in his side and it pierced his heart. It went through and there was blood and water and everything spilling out everywhere. He was gone. And yet they came back and said they went to the tomb and it was empty and there was these beings in light and they, that they, it must've been an angel said that he had risen and they'd be seeing him again. And so Jesus began to say, but wasn't the scriptures, the old prophets, didn't they tell you that there was going to be a child that was born, going to be born in Bethlehem? Wasn't he, didn't they tell you all these things? And he went through the history of the old Testament and he said, then wasn't there a man that came in that you called the son of God? Didn't he tell you that he would rise again? Didn't he tell you all these things? And they were listening to him and they were getting interesting uh, and all he was saying, well, yeah, I believe he did tell me that. Yeah, I think I remember hearing that. Yeah, he did say he would rise again. But you know, it was just women that came and you know how women are. It was just a group of women came and told us this. I know it was Mary Magdalene and his mother, Mary, and he, they named over a few other women. It was just a group of women that said it. He said, but as he was speaking of what they were saying, they could feel something becoming alive in them. And the symbol, I believe right now, of the women coming to bring a message is a symbol of love, bringing a message, bringing a message. He lives. He lives. He lives. The divine feminine began to usher in a whole new message. It's taken over 2,000 years for that message to begin to rise up and love to begin to speak from the hearts of humanity. And I can feel I'm here right now to say with love to each and every one that's hearing my voice, he lives and he lives in you and he lives in me. That divine Christo, that divine seed, that divine light, that divine consciousness, as Paul said, let the mind that was in Christ Jesus allow it. We have to allow the spirit to work through us now. Allow that mind that was in Christ Jesus to be also in you. For when you hear things and you do that and block it, it's not going to work through you if you have any resistance. But that's what I'm feeling. We're starting to be in places of peace. Of wanting that peace. Of acting and asking for that divine presence to work with us and through us. Not so I can have all the, the diamonds and rubies and pearls of this world. but that I can have that peace that goes beyond all understanding, that I can have the wisdom and knowledge to say and do the things that I came here to do, that I can love like Jesus, that I can walk like he walked, for he is the great example. And you are here today to be that great example for someone else. Have you ever seen little boys following their daddy around? If daddy put his uh, hands on his hips, that's where they put them. Daddy stood up to hall, the little boy will stand up tall. Children mimic us. Daddy cusses or mama cusses, they're going to do the same thing. They show bitterness, we're going to do the same. 
So now it's time to really recognize who our true parent is. It's the divine, the divine, the divine. Mother, Father, God, or whatever you want to call that. It's divine, it's consciousness itself. And it's here to work with us and through us to bring in that new heaven and new earth right here and right now. When they walked with Jesus and he walked with him, the two men that were telling him this story. When they got to their house, they said, it's getting, it's about sundown. He's stop, just come in and eat with us and, and stay the night if you like. They kept insisting, Jesus said, okay, and he went in with them. And when he did, they got out the, the food and Jesus blessed it. I see him eating something first, but a little bit. But anyway, he blessed the food. And then he took the bread and he broke it. And they looked at him. They'd been looking at him the whole time. Then all of a sudden, they recognized they had been hearing what he was saying. They understood that there was someone that came, that actually came to show us a way to connect once again with the divine. And they were recognizing that he was that bread of life. He was that water, that well that never runs dry. That that I'm saying is not the bread per se or the water per se, but it is that divine energy of the word that said he spoke. He told people when they, his disciples were looking for food and they said, you haven't eaten all day. He said, I have bread, you know, not up. I have the word of God and I, it feeds my soul. The word feeds my soul. It waters my soul. It gives me all that I need for that spiritual growth that's taking place within me. And that's what he was doing. He was giving the word of life. He was giving the life flowing to and through others. And we, they could not see and they could not hear until that heart was open to receive it. Because they thought they had to find something on the outer plane. They had to taste it. They had to feel it. They had to bathe in it or whatever. They had to see the blood. The blood is the life. It's the life frequency. It's the life force. And when we recognize that it's the vibration and the light of the words that are spoken through love, that will lift your heart, your mind, and your soul. It's the words that you say and the words that you receive through love and I'm being tapped on the shoulder and forgiveness. You are on your pathway to mastership. And every time you're not even thinking of it, but you are speaking from your heart with love and forgiveness and beholding the Christ in someone else. You are on your way to graduation. You're on your way to be all that you can be. And the more that light grows, the more you will see the little mook or the little stuff that's inside yourself is you'll have to ask, am I willing to give it up? If I, am I willing to ask for help to see it in a different way? <laughs> you walked into my bathroom. And you walked in, I'd been doing this, a lady used to help me, and she's no longer doing cleaning. So I thought I'd been doing a pretty good job of cleaning my house. 
not like I really like to, I don't have all the time, but I recognized she would go in and she would spray down. We have a, a, a shower with stones in it. Little, and it's almost like a little room. And that's why I bought it. I think I love the feel of that thing. <laughs> but anyway, she would spray it down with some disinfectant stuff. And then she would take the hose, you know, the sprayer, and she'd clean it off. And that would be that. Well, I thought, I haven't done that in several weeks. But once I started doing it, I realized it hadn't been done in probably months or years. It looked fine. I got that foamy stuff and I put it all over this floor and I let it sit for a while. After it stopped foaming, I decided to use the other half of the can and just go all over it. And then I had this big brush, you know, can't get down scrub like it used to, or yes, I can too. But I chose to have like, it's like a broom, real stiff. So I got in there, scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing, just scrubbing, scrubbing, went back and forth, scrubbing, scrubbing on the walls and stuff. And then I took the shower hose and started rinsing it off. Oh, it looks so pretty and shiny, those stones did. And then all of a sudden it was kind of, what's happening? It wasn't going down the drain. Oh my gosh. You know how you might get scum on a, a uh, y'all probably don't do that, but every once in a while you jump out of the tub and you don't clean it up right then and there's a little scum ring on it. I mean, there was gummy stuff just floating on top of the drain. I thought, where'd that come from? So I have to get a little piece of cloth to get it out and put it in a little basket there. Trace. And I do it again, and here it comes again. And I recognized all this stuff that I was right before me all this time. I never saw it. Oh my gosh. And I was sharing it with a friend, and I recognized that's what happens when we get serious about cleaning up our life. There's little things in us we don't even see. But when that light of spirit says, let's clean this act up, let's clean this part of your consciousness up, you start seeing, oh, my gosh, I didn't know I had this here. I don't want that there. And life begins to change. Spirit is always speaking to us in subtle ways like that. I could have just said poof with it and forgot it, but it kept coming up. You know, how could I let it get like that? And then I recognize it's like all stuff that comes up. It's to be recognized and cleared out with love. So from now on, I'm going to clean my house with love. How about you? This inner house too. So once he broke the bread and they recognized that it was Jesus sitting there with them all the time, and that's it, recognizing that the, the divine is with us all the time, all the time, to lead and guide us into all truth. When they got to that place, whew, he wasn't there anymore. They got the message. And they didn't just go to sleep. They got up from that table and they ran back to Jerusalem, wherever they left. And they went to tell the disciples what had happened. And they met Jesus once again. So from now on, I believe we'll be meeting that presence within us every time. We go to that inner temple, that inner room in us where peace and love reside. Then it's for us to open the door and let the light out where your light, your presence will help others find their own. And so it is. Namaste. I truly behold the Christ in you. And may you behold the Christ in yourself. Our loving creator, we give thanks for this day. Thanks for the work that's taking place on planet Earth. A time of purification. A time of change and revelation. A time of knowing. A time of being. A time of allowing creation to be all that it was meant to be in us, through us, and around us. Thank you, God.
I'm going to bring something else in real quick. Like. We're going to learn that all things that we've been misusing energy a whole lot. But for some reason, astrology is popping up for me. And I've kind of kept it at an edge, you know, because most people, they use it to predict things about their own life. Astrology wasn't meant for prediction. It was meant to look at energies and how they are affecting things. And then for you to choose how to work with those energies to help you be the best that you can be. I hope I got that out right words <laughs> that was coming to me. So this uh, Wednesday night, we'll be meditating. There's coming, uh, what is it? Is a solar eclipse. Somebody, that's what I'm feeling. There's a solar eclipse. Uh, that is a part of what affects the whole universe somehow. It affects the earth, I do know. And that's what I'm feeling. That energy is there. And it's not, it's a cycles that happen. And so what's going on is there's going to be more light that's going to be streaming in for us. So it's, as that light starts pouring in with these, this couple of days that we're going to experience, and you're moving into it right now, you should be ending a lot of old stuff. You should, you should be ending a lot of old stuff, old patterns that you've been doing. It's been breaking up and agitating you. They're starting to fall away as you put more light on it and you're more intent on it. That begins to go. And then you're entering into something new, something fresh. So begin to hold for yourself. And I'm hearing, or my, can I put this in God? And hold for this church and hold for this people of Winston-Salem and all over this world, really, that we began to find the places that we come together, that we can manifest more and more of this light that will spread all over this world. So hold an intention for yourself, hold your attention for your community, for your business, whatever, hold that intention because this energy is here to bring more light in it. But I guarantee as the light comes in, mook will come up. Stuff will come up. So do whatever, Deb, have that one up there again about being at peace, how we can be at peace, holding that peace, no matter what's going on, and your peace and your love and your light will help trans that, transmute those feelings that's going to come up. And when they do, you're going to find that stuff in the outer world is going to change. You're going to see politicians at each other's throat. You're going to hear things. You think you've heard things now? What I'm feeling right now is you're going to have a clash. It may even, well... It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what you hear, it's going to happen. You go to your own heart and you be at peace. Know it right at the moment of where you are, all is well. All is well. It's not that, oh, it's only oh, happening on the other side of the world. It can be happening right down the road from you or right next door to you. All this can be happening all around you. But as you hold that peace, your peace will help hold it for someone else. Can we do that? Can we do that? I'm hearing, yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can come together and do that. So we'll be here meditating on Wednesday evening, yoga, moving some energy out. Is that right, Linda? We'll be getting our bodies at peace. And then we'll be meditating, bringing the blessings of the divine in and around and through us, holding that. And it's nothing that I do or someone else does. And we've thought all the time it's what we do, but it's the light within us doing the work. It's that within. And if you are healed, if I'm holding a space for healing or for, I don't do that. I'm telling them myself. I hold for you the highest good. I've done that since I was little. If you're an invalid, I'm going to see you dancing. But I hold for the highest good in my mind, and then I release it to the divine. And I've seen miracles happen before, but somehow I've gotten frightened of it and I've backed up because the fear of it is that somebody would think I was doing something and deep inside my soul, it's not, I know it's not the personality of Elizabeth. It's the divine doing the work. So we, we, we come to that place. And when we come to that place, all we're doing is holding a high vibration for others to come up in, or we're holding that high vibration for somebody to step into, step into, but it's coming from them out. Just like people came to Jesus and he said, do you believe? Yeah, I believe you can make me whole. And then he says, stand up and walk. And he didn't say, ah, look what I've done. Come follow me. He said, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith in you. It's what's in you that made you whole. It said you believed that something divine could do it. And you opened up to receive it, but 
it came out from you. Wow. Now is the age to recognize where it comes from. Healing comes from within. Oh, I could get into that. That's what, that's what the Fillmore's and others brought about. It was a ministry of healing. It was a ministry of wholeness. It was a ministry of prosperity. But it was something somebody gave to you. It was something that came from you. Those words have laid dormant for a long time. You want to reawaken them? When we can reawaken those words in the spirit and understand the spiritual essence within it, all things are possible. All things are possible. As we begin to believe in that power and that presence that is within us, around us, and through us. And so maybe Thursday, it's coming up, maybe Thursday, if somebody could come at two o'clock, I'll be here. And we'll take a couple of hours to just, just be and see what comes up for us. Um, we'll see what happens. But you're all welcome to come at two o'clock on Thursday. That's... I think solar eclipse will be happening during that day and the evening before to prepare yourself or to, to hold the energy. There's the preparations already within us. So namaste. Love you all. I want to thank everyone that participates in holding the space for these past two and a half years or so financially and with everything else going on in the world. We only, I think we started off with three or four people that kept the doors open and you're keeping the doors open. I want to thank you for all your prayers, all your love, all your talent you brought in here to everyone that's ever sang here, everyone that's ever worked on outside, inside or anything. Thank you so much. And thank you for, for the financial support that pays the bills too. We live in this world, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My heart goes to every single one of you. If you'd like. The ushers would like to come forward. Wow, I didn't even, I didn't even open my anything up today. And if you'd like to give a financial blessing, but also give hold for the highest and best in this place, just the highest and best, whatever happens. This is not mine. It's it's. It's a gift from God. Each one of you are. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful.
Thank you, WG. We're going to bless this. If you'll give me just, can you give me five more minutes after this? Okay. Together, I give thanks for this visible evidence of the bounty of God. I send it forth with love and joy to do its perfect work. Thank you, God. It's like I got another little tap on my shoulder. Um, I had a daily word that I had sometime this month, and I didn't read it. And I'm feeling it's in my Bible. I would like to share it with you right now. Um, it says self-image. I don't know. <laughs> See what it is. But if you will, if you'd like to just close your eyes. Just relax. Oh, now I get it. <clears throat> I see myself in the likeness of my creator, God, the good. I see myself in the likeness of my creator, God, the good. Can you say that with me? I see myself in the likeness of my creator, God, the good. I am a child of God with divinity woven into the fabric of my being. My true nature is peace, love, and joy. I see myself as being divinely good and inspired by spirit. Yet, there can be times when, in my humanness, I express myself in the ways that may not reflect my true divine nature. Rather than criticizing myself, for any mistakes now, I will take time to once again turn my mind towards God. I will re reconnect with the loving qualities of the divine and remember the truth of who I am. For I am a reflection of my creator. Every moment is a chance to more fully express my divine given qualities. And I am a better person when I am one with the one who created me. Genesis 1, God created humankind in his own image. Thank you, God. And there's something that's been, a song that's been going through my head this morning. And I guess it's just telling me this is where we are right now. If we can accept it, I am the place where God shows up. Are you the place where God shows up? Begin to go into your heart and feel that. Well, Deb has that song. Just relax. A friend of mine wrote this song. And he's singing it. Strong enough to bear the burdens that sometimes come living this thing called life. Eddie Watkins. Am I wise enough to make the right decisions when I'm standing at the fork in the road? Sometimes I wonder and ponder only to realize I'm not alone and there's nothing I have to do on my own because I am the place where God is. Moves and trees and has his being. I'm the place where God is. Have enough to do the things I need to do to take care of myself. I'm to live a life of 
grace and holiness. Sometimes I wonder and ponder only to realize I'm not alone and there's nothing I have to do on my own because I am the place where God is. He got into music, and I know what I don't know what that is. Oh, here he is. And he said he would wake up some nights. He would just have money rolling in, drugs rolling in, alcohol rolling in. Find himself living in a car. He'd spend it all. He'd have to live in the car for a while. And then he said he just woke up and realized there's a better way, and there's something inside calling to me. And his life changed. He walked away from it all. He's got another song. We won't go into that, but I'm walking away to all the things that led me to confusion. The day is the day I walk away. He walked away from all of it, and his life changed. He changed, and he writes beautiful music. So thank you, Eddie Watkins. Thank every single one of you. 